Today we're going to talk about chapter 11, section 3 graphics, and these graphic have to do with air pressure. Okay, so number one. Number one asks, does air have mass? And the answer is yes, air has mass. So in order to show this, we are going to draw a picture of a triple bean balance with three beans, one, two, three. And we will represent air with a balloon. If you were to put a balloon with air in it, it does have mass, and it would weigh more than just the balloon by itself. Number two is what is density, and density is mass divided by volume. So number two is what is density, and density equals mass. So I'm going to use a triple beam balance again to represent mass divided by volume. And there's a couple ways we can find volume. If we have a rectangular prism or a cube, we can represent volume with length times width times height or and this is a terrible picture of a cube. There we go, fix this. Or we can use a graduated cylinder if it's a regular object or a liquid. Okay, so density is mass divided by volume. Number three, what is pressure? And pressure is the force exerting on an area or surface. So if I have a box and that box is under pressure, you're going to see that the walls bulge out. Okay? and they bulge out because whatever's inside of the box is pushing on the walls and creating pressure. Number four is air pressure. And air pressure is the weight of a column of air pushing down on an area. So if you are right here and you have your hands up because you're holding up your hands and you've got a column of air right here, okay? That air that's over top of you is actually pushing down on you, okay? And this is called air pressure. Now you might ask, why don't we squash flat to the ground because of all this air pushing on top of us? Well, the reason we can do that is because underneath you, you also have air, and that's helping to also support your hands up. Okay, so even though you have air pressure pushing down, you also have air pressure pushing up. And so that allows you to hold your hands up and us not to get squished to the ground. Also, we have liquids um, and solids inside of our body that also apply an equal pressure so that the air doesn't squish us. If we were to go on to another planet where the air pressure was a lot higher, then it could cause us to squish flat to the ground. Next one, that was number four, and the lines represent air pressure. Number five, what is a barometer? And this is an instrument used to measure changes in air pressure. It can be a tube with liquid in it, or it can be a dial very similar to that of a compass. And what it's measuring is the changes in air pressure. So it's measuring that air pressure. And it's called a barometer.
Number six is altitude. An altitude is the elevation or the distance above sea level. Number six, altitude. Okay, and if this were my mountain, my altitude would be my distance, if this is sea level, it would measure my distance above sea level. The higher above sea level I went, the higher my altitude. Seven. How is air pressure affected by altitude? So if I've got a little mountain climber here, there's the mountain, and down at the base of the mountain, you have a lot of oxygen. But as you get higher up, the oxygen spreads further and further out so that there is less oxygen the higher up you go. So, my little mountain climber is going to say there is less air pressure. The higher up you go, there's less air. The further down you go, you've got more a column, more air over top of you, and so there's more air pressure. So as you increase your altitude, you decrease your air pressure. That's a U. Number eight, where is air pressure the greatest? Air pressure is going to be the greatest at sea level. So again, if I draw my mountain, I have my ocean water, your sea level, right here, this is where air pressure, you've got all this air over top of you. Okay, so this is where air pressure is the greatest. And the last thing is why do you have difficulty breathing at high altitudes? At high altitudes there's less oxygen because the air is thinner. So as this guy climbs up on the mountain, where below there was a lot of air and the oxygen was concentrated and very dense, as you climb up the mountain, the air gets thinner and so there's less oxygen particles per square inch. So it's harder to breathe. That's all for these notes.